Hi, this is Anil and welcome to the video tutorial on Java programming. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to copy the contents of one array to another array. So for example, let's say in our program and if we had two variables, let's say num1 and num2. So let's initialize this num1 with a value of let's say 100. Now, if you want to copy the value of this num1 to this variable num2, then what you can do is you guys can write num2 equal to num1. So now both this num1 and num2 are going to contain the values 100 and they're going to be in the different different memory locations. So I'm just going to print it out. So it's going to be system dot out dot print line. And here I'm going to say num1 and uh, then uh, i'm gonna insert num1 then i'm gonna append a new line and then i'm gonna say num2 and i'm gonna append num2 all right now if i run this program you guys can see num1 is 100 and num2 is 100 so let's say i'm gonna change the value of this num1 variable after a copying the value of num1 to num2 let's say 50 now if i run this program you know num1 is 50 and num2 is 100 and it means that num1 and num2 are stored independently of each other so after copying these contents you know num1 will be stored in some memory locations and also you know num2 will be stored in some other memory locations so they are independent of each other but when you use the arrays in our programs you know we can't use this assignment operator to copy the contents of an array to another array so here just for the demonstration purpose i'm going to create an array so let's say our array is going to be of type um integers and let's say it's going to be marks and let's initialize this array you know i'm just going to use this method because you know i can enter the value so easily so 22 44 55 99 88 and then you know we're going to create another array and let's call it as marks copy and let's allocate the memory so that it can store five values that's because you know in this marks array i have five elements you know just for the demonstration purpose i'm using this so it's going to be new then int and then the value you know which is going to be 5 all right now we have two arrays you know one is marks and another one is marks copy now if you want to copy the contents of this marks to this marks copy then if you write marks copy equal to marks then what happens is this marks and marks copy are gonna point to the same memory location uh, if it is confusing don't worry and i'll try to draw this so that you know i can explain you better all right guys you know when we create this marks array what happens is you know marks array will be created and it's gonna store the five elements and then you know when we create marks copy and then we allocate memory locations to store five values at that time you know the memory locations will be allocated so that you know it can store the five values and then we have used this assignment operator and uh, we have assigned marks to this marks copy so here this marks is the name of the variable which is going to contain the address of the first element of the array so this marks is going to contain the address of this first element of this array so let's say it has address 1 2 3 4 5 then this marks is going to contain the address of this and here this marks copy is also contain the address of this first element you now which is containing the default value you know which is going to be zero you know when you allocate the memory for the arrays you know they are going to be containing the default values then you know when we write marks copy equal to marks you know by using that assignment operator at that time this marks copy is going to contain the value which is stored in this marks which is nothing but the address of this first array element so now you know this memory will not be referenced and it will be deleted by java automatically so we can say that this marks 
and this marks copy are pointing to the same memory locations. So if I change the value of this array, then that will be reflected in both this marks and marks copy. So just to demonstrate that what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the values of this marks copy and marks. So I'm going to use for loop and let's create a counter variable counter equal to zero then counter is less than marks dot length and then counter plus plus and I just gonna print out using the system dot out dot print line and it's gonna be marks of counter so I just gonna copy this again and I'm gonna paste it in the next line and here I just gonna change this one to marks copy and here also is gonna be marks copy all right now I'm gonna run this program you guys can see we have uh, 22 44 55 99 and 88 and then again we have 22 44 55 99 and 88 that's because you know both of these arrays are pointing to the same values stored in the memory so now if I change the value of this marks array and let's say we're gonna change the value of the marks and let's say index 2 you know the third element and let's say it's gonna be 100 and now if I run this program you know that will be reflected in both the arrays so we don't want this when we copy the arrays you know we want them to be stored in different memory locations and also you know they should be independent of each other so in Java when you need to copy the elements of one array to another you have three options available so the first thing is you can use a for loop and copy the elements one by one or you can use a static method which is available from the system class which is called uh, array copy or you can use something called a clone method you know, which is an advanced topic and, and I'm gonna teach you in some other tutorials so here I'm gonna explain you how to do that by using a for loop and also by using the other copy method which is available from the system class so here I'm just gonna remove these uh, two statements and uh, I'm just gonna copy this for loop again and I'm gonna paste it here and here uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the contents and we're gonna paste so it's gonna be marks copy and then I'm gonna refer the counter and then equal to marks and then the counter so now you know this statement is gonna copy element by element and it's gonna paste that in this marks copy so I'm just gonna run this now you guys can see we have 22 44 55 99 and 88 then again 22 44 55 99 and 88 so after this if I change the value of the marks array let's say marks of um, the element 2 you know the third element 200 and if I run this program you know it is changed here in this marks array and it is not changed and this marks copy so so they are stored in the different memory locations so you know they are not gonna be pointing to the same memory locations so we are copying the element by element all right all right the next option that is available to us is to use the array copy method you know which is available from the system class so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment this code so that you know you guys can uh, uh, check it out you know when you when you get the source code from my web blog and here I'm gonna use the array copy method from the system class so the syntax to use the array copy method to copy one array to another array is first we need to write the class name you know which is system and then the method name so it's gonna be array copy and this array copy is a static method you know which means that you don't need to create any object to use that method so the first parameter for this array copy method is you know from where we want to copy or you know the source array from where we want to copy so in this case it's gonna be the marks array 
so I'm gonna write marks and then the second parameter so the second parameter specifies from which index of this source array you want to start copying so if you want to start copying from the beginning of this source array then you need to pass the index as 0 so if you want to copy from the third element then you need to pass the index as 2 in this case we want to copy from the beginning and that's why I'm gonna pass the index as 0 so the third parameter is gonna be the target array in which array you want to store the copied elements from this source array we want to store that in this marks copy and that's why it's gonna be marks copy all right the fourth parameter for this array copy method is in which index you want to store the values from the source array in this target array we want to store that from the beginning so I'm gonna pass the index as 0 and then the last parameter is how many elements that you want to copy from this marks array to this marks copy or you know from this source array to this target array we want to copy all the elements and we can get the length of this marks array or this source array by using the length property so it's gonna be marks dot length this is it so this statement is going to copy all the elements from this marks array and it's going to store that in as marks copy array so i just gonna comment this uh, line so that you know i can show you that all the elements have copied and here what i'm going to do is after this first for loop i'm just going to add another line dot print line and i'm going to say the marks array and if you want to you guys can add a new line here also and I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here before this marks array okay it's gonna be marks copy and here it's gonna be marks array and I'm gonna remove that new line you know just to make it pretty that's it now I'm gonna run this now you guys can see the marks array we have 22 44 55 99 and 88 and then we have the marks copy array which contains 22 44 55 99 88 you know the exact values of this marks array is been copied to this marks copy array all right the next thing that i want you guys to teach you is you know what happens if you change the value of the element in one array so i'm gonna change the uh third element of this marks array to a value of 200 so if i run this program you guys can see that change is occurred only in this marks array and you know this marks copy array is not altered that's because they are stored in different different memory locations and they are independent of each other all right the next thing that i want you guys to show you is let's say you want to copy from this index one from this marks array so at that time you guys can specify here you know we want to copy from the index one from this source array and we want to store that in the beginning of this target array and the number of elements to be copy is one two three four because you know we are starting from this index one so it's gonna be marks dot length minus one i'm gonna run this you guys can see 22 44 55 99 and 88 and in this marks copy array we have started from the index 1 so 44 55 99 88 and then we have the 0 that's because you know the default value which is stored in this marks array all right the next thing that i want you guys to show you is let's say you want to copy from this index 1 from this marks array and you want to save that in this marks copy array starting from the index 1 so here I'm gonna change this one to 1 here and uh, I'm just gonna run this now you guys can see our copy has started from the index 1 you know the 44 is copied and it is stored from the index 1 in this marks copy array so the first element is containing the default value you know which is 0 so I suggest you guys to you know play around with this one and you know if you guys don't understand all these concepts at once just watch it again and uh, make sure that you know all these things
properly and another method is available to copy the arrays you know which is by using the clone method you know which is a bit advanced topic so i'm not gonna teach that in this tutorial so i'm gonna make a video tutorial on that one in the future so this is it guys this is how you guys can copy one array or you know copy the elements of one array to another array so thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel the source code of this tutorial will be available in my web blog learninglateducation.blogspot.com you guys can go there and copy this source code and try it out so once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial